feel that you should be encouraged because it can happen, but we are very dynamic. Mm. If we should uh, stand out or come out boldly, we will be able to interpret very well. Mm. So let me just read out something far from you on that. Um, again, going back to this Forbes article, um, it says that over the past decades, scientific studies have consistently shown that on most of the key traits that make leaders more effective, women tend to outperform men. For example, on things like humility, self-awareness, self-control, moral sensitivity, social skills, emotional intelligence, kindness, uh, pro-social and moral orientation. They are all more likely to be found in women than men. So that's just to support the point that on key traits women do outperform men. And this, these are the key traits that they say are necessary for This is a proper finding. This is from the force, not a force quotes online. So they say that some of these traits are necessary in leadership. The Harvard one has specific traits which I will discuss um, later on. But what do you think about that? I think that the problem has um, been from our understanding of equity and equality. That has basically been the problem where I'm concerned. Um, when we are talking about equity, we mean differently than when we say equality. And for me, we are not equal as people. Mm -hmm. Biologically, we are different. Equality can never be achieved. Equity, yes. And that is what, for me, is the problem. Because when women say they are fighting for, uh, or people who say they are fighting for women, end up fighting for equality and not equity. And so it doesn't succeed. Now, um, women, as you mentioned, are very talented, extremely talented. And we have so many qualities that makes them sometimes better than men. Mm. But we so are not sometimes <laughs> we, we, we don't yeah. we don't focus on these ones. We focus on there are too many men here, so we need women. Mm. It's not um, factually correct. If you need somebody to fly a plane, you find somebody who is capable of flying the plane. In fact, if you tell me yeah, well, we have many pilots, but because they are all males, I want the female to fly. I want to go. But the night is against... Um, hold on, um, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I'm saying this because there's danger here. If the person can't fly the plane, I go in. What do I expect at the end of the day? And that's why I started by saying women are very talented. And so why don't we base on that? I can do it better. Give us the opportunity rather than say that there are 10 men here and so we need to add on with a woman. And so the nine men, perhaps, and the one woman now will be compared. And definitely the option will be the men because they are more. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know your scenario. But exactly. cases where the woman can do it. Yes. Should not be denied. Yes. Exactly. I am not. That is exactly what I am saying. Yes. That if we can do it, then give them the opportunity based on that. The argument that there are many men, so there should be a woman. It's same as if the women have been done a favor. And so it doesn't work. If the woman, if the one woman there is there because he, she has what it takes and does the job well. You don't tell me that another person who is qualified and is a woman shouldn't be there. But if we are basing it on the fact, the mere fact that, okay, um, we have too many men, males should be. And you, you gave an example. There are female leaders in this institution. They are there by merit. And so nobody would say tomorrow is because they are women. Mm -hmm. They're qualified to be there. And I think that is, for me, what we should be doing more, rather than the argument that um, maybe that's not what they mean, but that's my understanding. Yeah, that yeah. you're a woman. The, 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 yes, the um, I'm is, just yeah. thinking aloud. They are meant to fly planes because they qualify to fly planes. Yeah. And now you tell me because there are too many men, you want a lady to fly, irrespective of whether or not 
No, I don't think I don't so. Know. But what I am saying, no, I was giving a scenario, and I am saying that that is how our argument sounds whenever we are talking about male female. And that is why I'm saying that we should focus on the fact that women are skilled and has what it takes to do the things that has to be done, rather than just the argument of uh, they are females. But this comes I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Opportunity. Yeah. Because if Nine, let's say 95% of the pilots out there are men, I don't know the statistics. Uh, do you think that's a problem? Well, uh, I don't think it would be a problem because if there is a woman who is scheduled to fly the plane, she should obviously not fly. Yeah. I remember yeah. I, I took uh, a pilot, one pilot who sat in the plane and uh, came from Belgium to camp. was a woman. Perfect. You see, but the scenario he gave is to resonate in committees and other, you know, stuff. For example, we constitute a committee, and because we want to make gender balance, somebody who doesn't even have a finance background, because we want female representation, boom. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's that scenario, would work. And, and generally, that is what I'm trying to say. Generally, not that it happens every time, but I'm saying that the effort. It's like uh, the 80 20, is it 80 20 rule? Yeah. Uh, efforts on the 80 is more like they are because they are women. But I'm saying, why don't we focus on the fact that women are able and capable or qualified to? If that is a fight, then I, I don't see how it shouldn't be possible to uh, narrow the gap that we are talking about. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, again, I think, you know, I think we're missing, maybe we're not looking at the fact that do women have the opportunities to ultimately get into those sure. positions in the first place? Because I think we've all experienced it. If it's male dominated, then it's like, you know, the cord is breaking the glass ceiling, right? Yeah. Even getting there becomes a struggle, especially when it's male dominated, because we're trying to, you know, go through some of these hurdles. So, if there are 10,000 pilots out there and there's an equal number of men around, it's fine. If they're all men or most of them are men, the issue is that there's a problem because people are thinking, okay, is it because women are not being given the opportunity? And that's why I think sometimes they're like, let's have a quote and then let's push women in there because the fear is that, okay, women are not being given the opportunity. Because listen, if you were a kid, Lydia, and I'll speak to you on this. Let's say you told your parents you wanted to be a pilot. What what would their response be? Sure. What if and maybe you footballer? Yeah. Like I was gonna say that exactly. <laughs> what if you want to be a footballer? Footballer. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> well, it may yeah. be a bit funny, yeah. right? So I, I'm saying because you know, even from the onset, there are certain professions, even as we're growing up, we're sort of conditioned to go a certain direction. And not that you have to, but that is where I am coming from. So if we say that we want um, equity, why don't we start from there? Making the girl child know that exactly. you are capable and able, you're not limited by gender. Exactly. And so then we'll start having a lot more women in the field. Yeah. And so the issue of numbers will not now be an issue. And the system anymore. has to and, and that Exactly, so that's what I am talking about. The, where we're taking the fight is for me, um, I mean, we will come back to the same point again. Yeah. Sorry, to come in, you see, now there is a conscious effort to put the women in leadership. I try to search women in leadership. Interestingly, it is in Accra. The search on Google to predominantly come from Accra. I was wondering why yeah, yeah. people in the north and Kumasi are not the because people in the because those areas are where you have the traditional settings, and these are where you have women being um, dominated. And so, for a long time, it could be there. And even if you're excelling, nobody thinks that it's important. Excellent. So, the, the angle I want to come from in here with has got to do with the empowerment, the sensitization, the equity. Yeah. So, I see. That defines the capabilities of women. There's one thing about women that perhaps maybe those of us 
<laughs> well, the house of wicked remains in its own place. We do enjoy the elders. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they are very serious. Those characters were not uh, you know really affects some of this detention. Yeah. However, the limitation which usually sits during that is the natural nature of the woman who have to have grown mobility leave. Who so has to challenge. challenge, you see, and that defines some level of limitations against their effective practices. That's a point of caution and counsel that I want to have to keep. You can pick it or not. So, so just to wrap up, because we're almost there. Yes. If you are a female instead, and you are in higher education, you see that at a, at a very early stage, you start to give birth, and you know, because most of the top leadership positions in most advanced you know, positions in Ghana, mostly at about age 35, by that time you might have gained your master's degree, your PhDs, have got this number of publications, yes, maybe by a senior assistant, junior assistant instructor, you grew up, then get into that kind of top positions. So when you get there, there are so many barriers that at the very young stage you have already overcome, that you have given birth already, you know, you have schooled, you have done what you're supposed to do, and you can't easily. Otherwise, there are some positions it it tends to be very difficult to engage women to occupy. But of course, not that women cannot do. Women can do if you are the sole woman. Appointed to work at a plant at, let's say, um, 12 plus plants, and you are the only one who's supposed to be there and doing the expression. Mm -hmm. And you go on maternity leave. And assuming all those teams are female dominated, you can just imagine the chaos. That is why we need to always balance and support the system with both male and then the female, and then give the equal opportunity to everybody. But giving high privilege to those who are, uh, in quotes, less you know, privileged to sit at power with those. And that is very good. So, uh, last point, you just make it quick. So, at that instance, the woman who wants to go out and have to wait there for the family, you understand? So, when the uh, leadership comes in, then it becomes a distraction. It distracts the lady. Because mm. the baby is considering how we just made the leadership for the domestic and yes. Yeah, then, but the, the women are better at yes. multitask than the men. Yeah. The men are yeah. uh, that's that's the the true. True. And so for, for me, um, it shouldn't be an issue by a country or institution that is saying, I want women in leadership has actually um, the plan or framework for that. Because it won't happen in a day. It needs to be properly talked through. We'll be talking about these things forever. And it will never happen. All right. So yeah, yeah I have to unfortunately I have to end. I have to end today. So I'll let you have like two seconds, the last word, and then I'll end it. Yeah. yeah. One position with men or women in leadership in academia lies on the fact that give equal opportunity to everyone. Yeah. Once the person qualifies, give the person the opportunity and let the person take that mountain. And together, we build a better can. And globally, um, I can say that without women, we cannot get there 100%. We can try, but look, we <laughs> fail along the line. That is why God, in his own innermost sense, designed men to. That's a great Let me mention help the women get there. Sure. Thank All you. Right. Thank that's you. That's it. Um, hopefully, we have another we have a part two on this. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's a wrap for today's show. Um, I'd like to thank my panel. Um, guys, thanks for coming and thanks for um, giving us uh, you know, your reviews, your list, and insights. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. All right, guys. So, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, please subscribe to our channel. 
press the notification button, share, and like. This is Happy Being Here Talks to you. Thanks for watching. See you again next week. Bye. Yeah.